Okay, in this video, we are going to be looking at a little wireless project that I'm working on. I'm just getting it set up. So in the very left, you can see my Drock signal generator. It generates a 4 to 20 milliamp current loop. And that's fed into my variable frequency drive, which will be controlling a three-phase motor. So as I increase the current into the current loop, which is controlling the variable frequency drive, once I hit about 4 milliamps, she'll kick in. There she is. So that's the frequency on the display. So that'd be 4.43 hertz and it goes all the way up to maximum speed which would be 60 hertz and that will be a full 20 milliamp uh, current in the current loop and I could take it all the way down to zero so what I, what I want to do, I want to run this wirelessly so my, 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 uh, my, my current loop generator will be my PLC and I want to be able to control a motor about a mile away so my uh, variable frequency drive will be a mile away and I want to be able to send a current loop signal wirelessly to my variable frequency drive to control the motor. So we're going to have a look at that in this video. Okay, here's a three-phase motor that I'm working on. Now this is a one and a half horsepower three-phase motor. And I have it connected up to a variable frequency drive. And I can control the speed of the motor through this front potentiometer. So as I turn it up, you can see the display increases. That's the frequency. So the higher the frequency, the faster the motor spins. And I can take it back down to stop. Okay, I've configured my variable frequency drive to accept a 0 to 20 milliamp current loop input. You can see the two wires here into the ACI. And my front pot does not control my variable frequency drive anymore. So now I could use my signal generator that will generate 0 to 20 milliamps. I got it set up for 2 milliamps. Which will start around 4. You can see the motor is starting to, to come on. As I bring my current up, so now I have control of my motor using 0 to 20 milliamps coming out of my Drock signal generator. And I can take it back down. Okay, so this is my wireless setup. And if you look on the left, I have my transmitter. This is a 1 watt transmitter. It runs on 902 to 928 megahertz, the ISM band, so it's license free. And I have my 4 to 20 milliamp current loop feeding the input of this transmitter. Now it's transmitting that data, the value of the current loop, over to this receiver. So it's going to mirror the current that it sees in the transmitter. And it's going to come out the terminals into the variable frequency drive. So the distance between this setup and this setup could be about 2 miles. You can see the antennas on each, on each radio. Now when I increase the current into the transmitter, once I hit 4 milliamps, you can watch the variable frequency drive kick in. It's so right there. So I'm, now I'm transmitting the current that I'm feeding into the transmitter and it's being mirrored in the receiver and, and it's being fed into the variable frequency drive. So now I have total control of the speed of the motor. It also has digital inputs on the transmitter and on the receiver so we could feed it into the variable frequency drive to do a stop function, a forward, reverse, jog, so we could actually do that plus the speed of the motor all the way down to stop. Okay, here's my radio link hardware, my two modules, my transmitter and my receiver. And you can see the antenna connectors on each module. Now I was using a quarter wave monopole antenna on each module, but you could use directional antennas for greater range. Now the transmitter has a one watt RF output and it runs on the 902 to 928 ISM band so it's license free and it's a hopping spread spectrum radio so it has high immunity to interference now there's three LEDs on each module and the top one is labeled RF so on the transmitter that indicates it's transmitting and on the receiver it indicates there's a link between the transmitter and receiver now the other two LEDs indicate the switch input so we could have two push button or toggle switches hooked up to the terminal strips if we push the button on the transmitter, we'll get a relay closure on the receiver and we'll get a light indication on the LED. Now you can mount this on a DIN rail, set up for a DIN rail. You hook up your power and your antennas and your 4 to 20 milliamp current loop into the transmitter. And then you'll get the output 4 to 20 milliamps on the receiver mirrored from the transmitter. Okay, on the receive module, we have three relays, three control relays inside the module itself. You can see here on the schematic. 
Now two of these relays are the remote switch relays. So if we have a push button or a toggle switch hooked up to the transmitter, we can activate these relays when we press the push button on the transmitter. Now the third relay is called RF link. So if we lose communication from the transmitter, this will activate and could shut down the system. So it's a fail-safe relay that will shut down the system if we lose communication. And the RF light will go out on the front panel. Now on these two relays, when they get activated, we'll have the LEDs on the front panel light up. Now this module here, I've had it for a while, it's made by Omnex, and they got bought out by another company called Elpro. So you could go online and see the new version uh, of this module. And it even has Modbus capability. So it has Modbus, it has 4 to 20 milliamp current loop, and then it has the two remote relays. So it's a good good system, that it's, it's very reliable, so if you need to activate anything using the 4 to 20 milliamp current loop or any switch contacts, might be easier to go wireless than to run cables, say, through a factory. It might be pretty hard to run some cables through some buildings. So it's an easy way out. So just a little video, give you some ideas how you can remote 4 to 20 milliamp current loop.